I'm your host, Eric Eisenberg. Welcome to Hero Blend number 23. This week, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige said some amazing things about the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that could change things completely. There's a ton to talk about, so stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. This week, I am very happy to have as my guest host, Mr. Joel Amos from Movie Fanatic. How's it going, man? Very good, Eric. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. This is your first time on the show, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope I you're excited. very thrilled. Thank you. So, this week, we are talking all about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige recently spoke at the uh, distributor expo in Europe, called Cine Europe, where he talked all about the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, both from Gar from Guardians of the Galaxy to Thanos to Doctor Strange and everything. We have a lot of interesting things to talk about today, a don't we? A lot. Uh, so let's kick off right at the beginning. Guardians of the Galaxy is our next is the next film in the Mar Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, it's coming out on August first, but I've kind of noticed that people are already thinking towards the future. They're already looking at Guardians too. Yes. Have you noticed this yourself? Absolutely. I think from the first trailer, uh, with the whimsical kind of hooked on the feeling mm -hmm. sense, totally. uh, the very strong, emotionally dramatic second trailer. The yeah, the international trailer. trailer that was just released. Sure. Uh, I think people are extremely excited. They not only want to see this movie, but they want to see where these characters go next. Absolutely. And um, Kevin Feige, in his comments, said that they're not necessarily planning, uh, quote unquote, on paper for Guardians of the Galaxy two yet because they're. Are focused on uh, the one film and if it's going to actually work and they want to make sure that they put all their best ideas into it. But it is clear that they are looking towards the future. He talks about how there are many Guardians of the Galaxy teams that before this one that have been developing since the 60s. There are a lot of directions to go. So, it, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that we are headed towards sequel territory, yeah? I think so. I think it's, it's pretty foolish for them not to think so. Yeah. And because of production time and casting and post-production, mm -hmm. they need to be thinking about a second movie while they're making the first movie. Absolutely. I mean, just to be at the ready. So I think, you know, no one ever accused Kevin Feige of not thinking ahead. And he's <laughs> clearly thinking ahead sure. with his whole world, and that's got to be, you know, Guardians is one of them. Sure. And I mean, and you have to realize Marvel, they kind of have a history with sequels. Hulk is the only character who has yet to get a sequel in this universe. You have Iron Man, uh, Thor, Captain America, even the Avengers are getting a sequel next year. It's likely that, I mean, the chances are high that we're going to eventually see Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy 2. And certainly helping those statistics are Kevin Feige's quotes about Thanos, who, I mean, when you first saw him in the post-credits of Avengers, you had to be excited. Beyond excited. Yeah. I just didn't think we'd have to wait so long to see him again. Absolutely. That is a very good point. <laughs> I, we, I mean, and there were many who thought that he was, they were setting up for the, uh, for, to, to be the villain in the second Avengers film. Yeah. Obviously, that's not the case because Ultron's taking that position. Uh, but he is getting a tiny bit of a role in Guardians of the Galaxy. We're kind of getting to meet him and a few of his cronies, like Ronan the, Ronan the Accuser and Korath the Pursuer and Nebula and all these great characters. Mm -hmm. But I, But from Kevin Feige's comments, it sounds like... This is only the taste that's going to eventually take us to something much, much bigger. I think we'll see, if we see a little bit of him in Guardians, we'll see even more of him in Ultron. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, but it'll be secondary. Yeah. Uh, but I think, you know, we're going towards something huge. Yeah. I mean, he did not sit on this villain that was one of the most <laughs> popular and favorite of all the Marvel fans. With the Infinity there. Gauntlet being one of the most favorite storylines out there. He is Crossing going out. somewhere with this character and mm -hmm. somewhere huge. So, I mean, it will be worth the wait. Totally. Trust me. <laughs> and he says, and Kevin Feige did say that the idea is for future Avengers films. Mm -hmm. I think mixing that in with the idea of a Guardian's future, uh, knowing that the Infinity Stones are out there, as they're called in the yep. Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think... It looks like Infinity Gauntlet is going to be Avengers 3. I'm completely stoked by that idea. Um, moving in, even further into the future, so far into the future that we're not even necessarily sure when it's going to happen, mm -hmm. is his comments on Doctor Strange. Yes. Uh, this is an important character mm -hmm. for the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm going to let you explain why. <laughs> well, I think it's really important because you've got the, the grounded in Earth superheroes in yeah. Marvel, and you've got the grounded in the interstellar world of the universe characters, but we've never really had a supernatural. That's absolutely true. And this is Doctor Strange. Yep, and that's I his think, whole realm. I think that, that, that this is a whole new opportunity for the Marvel world. Mm -hmm. You think, you know, what more can they do? Well, you know, let's take a look at Doctor Strange, and there's a whole 
new, pardon the word, but universe yeah. that Doctor Strange can inhabit. I mean, we're talking about inner dimensions, we're talking about demons, we're talking about all kinds of the spiritual, things that are going to knock Thor and Iron Man on their ass. Like, yes. this is going to be really cool stuff. They have a really interesting director yes. attached in Scott Derrickson, who is a horror director yes. by trade. He's, uh, as we've talked about on the show before, uh, uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose, Sinister. Uh, he's a very interesting choice for this, for this film. Yeah, and I actually just sat down to him for Deliver Us From Evil. Oh, very cool. And he, of course, couldn't say anything about <laughs> Doctor Strange, even though I tried. But just being with him for five minutes, I'm thinking, man, this guy is going to hit it out of the park. Yeah. They could not have picked a better guy. Uh, he's got a sense of the supernatural, and you toss him in the world with everybody who knows what they're doing in Marvel, like Kevin, and yeah. uh, I think everyone should be really excited. Now I think the big question is, who is Doctor Strange? And that who is Doctor Strange is a question we, apparently we're going to be getting an answer to, because Kevin Feige, in his quotes, said uh, that the casting of Doctor Strange is going to happen in the next couple of months with an announcement coming in the next couple of months. Uh, so we can definitely be on the lookout for that. That's going to be cool. Uh, and with Avengers still filming, maybe a little bit of a connection there. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, but also interesting is that he said that uh, production could start in the spring of next yeah. year. And uh, if unless my math is wrong, that should put it about the July uh, 2016 slate, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Marvel has uh, had that date uh, set out since, I believe, last summer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been kind of the rumored movie to follow Captain America. Uh, Captain America 3, that is. Uh, I think that seems pretty likely at this point, yeah? I think it's pretty likely, and, and I know they said several months for an announcement, but I would not be surprised if they didn't use the enormous international <laughs> stage of Comic-Con to make mm. some huge announcements. Oh, yeah, I think, I, I honestly, uh, I mean, Comic-Con is obviously less than a month away at this right. point. Uh, I think we're going to be at least hearing, if not new titles, new release dates. All, I think in the next month we're going to be hearing quite a bit of cool stuff, Marvel fans, so definitely Fair don't fun. fret about that. Um, the other thing, uh, another thing that he talked about was the future of Marvel television, mm. which in and of itself is pretty fascinating, mm. even, even disconnected from uh, what's going on on the big screen. I think so, and I think that, you know, again, he's smart, he's very forward-thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, television seems to be the way to go. It's obviously working very well with DC. Yeah. I think Marvel's doing a pretty decent job with uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and it's been able it's to... It's growing, tie, sir. It's been able to tie into uh, what we see on the screen, but I think that their deal with Netflix, and with Netflix, what they're doing <laughs> with TV, it's very, very exciting. Yeah, it's, it's revolutionary. I mean, we've seen it for the past couple of years with their original programs, mm -hmm. but, like, but with... And Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones, like, these are characters who are going to be, like, most of which are going to be new to, I mean, we know Daredevil, obviously, that show uh, has everything going for it at this point, uh, with the recent casting of Rosario Dawson and Vincent D'Onofrio, uh, but the interesting thing that Kevin Feige has to say about it is that they are seemingly keeping them distant for now, they're keeping them separate. Do you like that idea? Do you think that that's the right way to go? I'm wondering if they're keeping them that way because they feel like they've learned a little bit of a lesson from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. Uh, and I think that maybe, you know, by not tying them directly in to the cinematic universe, it, it allows them some freedom. That's definitely true. Uh, to kind of explore however they want to go. Television is a different animal. Mm -hmm. And I think oh, that, absolutely. you know, they, they, if they can have the freedom to do what they want, you know, usually that equals something st truly special. And also, I mean, there is, of course, he may say that there's not that much of a connection, but we can always look forward to that day when there is a connection. Right. And we see the Defenders join up with the Avengers and mm -hmm. this huge, giant, whatever the hell they have planned. Uh, I'm very <laughs> excited yeah. for it. Um, I think that, it, it, I mean, would I like to see Daredevil show up in the Avengers Age of Ultron? Absolutely. But at the same time, do I want these characters to also get their due and kind of progress in their own way? Yeah. And the sense I get, even just from the Daredevil casting so far, mm -hmm. is that it, it kind of feels like a movie. Yeah. You know, certainly. I mean, I mean just, Rosario Dawson and Vincent, uh, and Vincent are certainly These are some actors. powerful people. You know, I've been, I will still say that Vincent made the best villain in the Men in Black movies. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, the fact that he's part of this. And Netflix kind of frees them from network television. Yeah, it gives them some a bit of freedom. Absolutely. Again, I mean, that's another word we've used a couple times in the last couple minutes is freedom. And yeah. if you give creative people freedom, amazing things happen. You're going to get a lot of great stuff. I'm still curious who they're going to get to show run everything. Mm. I mean, we know that uh, it looks like Stephen Denight is going to be take care of Daredevil, um, but the rest of it is kind of a bit of unknown. Uh, Melissa Rosenberg might be taking care of Jessica Jones, that's still kind of at the rumor stage. I'm very excited to see where the future of this goes. Kevin Feige's comments uh, aside, <laughs> I'm very excited. Uh, but the last uh, stuff that he talked about was, of course, the comic book dream, which is Avengers, fighting along Spider-Man, fighting along X-Men, fighting along Fantastic Four. 
I mean, I think you're like me in that this is what we eventually want to see someday, right? Yeah, yeah it is. And, you know, from his quotes, he kind of, you know, let us know, don't hold your breath. Well, At least yeah. in the short term. That's true. Um, I, I don't get it. I, I haven't gotten it for years. <laughs> because, I mean, if it's if it's a money issue, there is more than enough money to go so around. So much money. So much money. So much money. So it's, it can't be about <laughs> money. It, it can't necessarily be about ego, because what that has to do with it. I mean, if it's just protection, like, these are ours, and that's yours. Yeah, that they purchased their rights, and like, they don't want to muss it up. or I don't know what it is, but I feel like... Time heals all wounds, <laughs> so whatever wound it is, it will eventually heal, and we will eventually. I mean, we may have to take our grandchildren <laughs> to see these movies, right? But it will happen. It will happen. Um, but I mean, and as long as these, as long as Sony keeps making Spider-Man movies, they're going to keep renewing the rights on them. Same with X-Men, who, as Kevin Feige pointed out, just released X-Men: Days of Future Past, was which, in its own right, is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the word fantastic, Fantastic Four reboot is is in the mix so that's probably going to stick around for a while it's going to be a little while before we ever actually get to see these characters but at the same time kevin feige having passion for it like he enjoying the idea that this could happen that's a glimmer of hope right and i think the glimmer of hopes also existed on very small levels mm -hmm. like we have quicksilver in days of future past yeah. we have them in age of ultron <laughs> so they may be different actors playing them but at least a couple of characters yeah, there's a little bit of leak. a little bit it has for a little bit of leak. a little bit of yeah. time <laughs> We'll take that for now. Exactly. You, you put enough cracks in the dam, eventually it floods. Exactly. Um, Joel, give me your final thoughts on all of this. Give me your excitement level for the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I, I think on a scale of 1 to 10, mine goes to 11. Because <laughs> I think that... I think that they have the Midas touch. Mm -hmm. uh, even I with the... It. I wouldn't even call what's happened with Ant-Man Ant a misstep. I think it's more of a sidestep. Yeah, because I mean, I, I, I talked about this in previous episodes that I think Peyton Reed is in, in a very interesting choice at the very least. So, yeah. And I just think everything they do is intriguing at the least and amazing at the most. Yeah. So, whatever they have coming our way, I will be front and center. They definitely look like they're taking full advantage of everything Marvel Comics has to offer. I mean, mm -hmm. they're going into outer space with Guardians. They're mm -hmm. going into interdimensional worlds with Doctor Strange. They have huge crossover ideas plan mm -hmm. they the, the, there's very interesting things coming up in the in the future of comic book movies i can't wait to see it uh joel thanks so much for being on the show with my me this pleasure week, man. and please come on again soon whenever you want cool cool have a good week everyone take care